I know they're impossible, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You sit That's around waiting. You sit for around. Yeah. Hours lighting. And like, yeah, sit around waiting for lighting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is the warm up period. This oh, is. Awesome. We're getting to know each other. This is foreplay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now we can move it's up. It's been to a long play. voyage. We move up to five play. That's right. right. <laughs> so. All right, where we start? He starts usually. How do you like Melbourne? You know, uh, I like it quite a bit. It reminds me of San Francisco. Uh, you know, I, I came through here for a day maybe six years ago and uh, I always wanted to come back and that was part of the uh, uh, you know I'm I'm here in Melbourne and then I'm going I'm saying it right Melbourne right? Wow. Uh, see I do my research <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, Auckland but I'm staying uh, I'm staying here for like three or four more days purposely because I've been to Auckland I like Auckland but I wanted to spend time in Melbourne yeah yeah so uh, you know I, I took a walk this morning I went down to Fed Square and went to, uh, you know, walked along Yarra, yeah. the river. It was lovely, you know, it was really, really great. So. Yeah, south Bank down there are the rivers. It's ri that's where I went. I went on the uh, on the South Bank so I could see the city in the background. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we, yeah. we sent Ian McNeese. Oh, did you? Yeah. For lunch, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fan of his, too. Yeah. Yeah, but oddly enough, from Doctor Who, you know. Yeah. You know where I'm a fan of his from? Yeah. Doc Martin. Yeah. Oh, Doc Martin. Yeah. 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 We had a chat about that too. Yeah, what hasn't he been in? Well, that's right, he's been in a lot of things, isn't <laughs> yeah. he? He was reminding us of a few of his little roles. Yeah. Anyway, talking of your roles, okay. um, I guess we start with uh, Stargate. Star what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, how did you find that role? Well, you know, that role uh, for me uh, was a life changer, you know, uh, but you never know going in. It's like they say, you know, life happens and, and you only appreciate it. You, <laughs> you don't appreciate it enough in the moment. You only appreciate it with regret that it's over. Uh, and, and Stargate was one of those things. I got to do, I think, 26. Uh, you know, it lasted so long. And, uh, you know, generally, you know, actors are hired gun. We come in, it can be a couple of weeks, we don't know the people, we don't know the lovely cameraman that we were joking about. And, uh, you know, the stars of the, play, of, of the piece are sort of looking on judgingly, or at least we suppose they are, they, probably. You know, uh, but Stargate, all of a sudden, you were around long enough that uh, I got to know everyone, everyone was glad to, you know, to, to be back together. Oh, except that every time I went up there, it meant they were going to a gravel pit. So they were not they were not very happy about that, you know. Uh, but uh, so it was it was quite delicious, you know. It was a, a job that has uh, has been remarkable over the years to uh, to look back on. Yeah. And a great character, of course. I know. And a great character. A few years ago, um, we we got to talk to Jan Newman, and uh, she was telling us it was some of the problems of getting the gold thing to stay on. <coughs> Did you run into any of those problems? Oh yeah, I was one of the people that, you know, and it would be invariably on a good take. Bing. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, you know, the gold things are, th are, is a, are questions generally that young people ask about. And the question they ask is, you know, how do you put it on? And I, I always say with a nail gun to them. But, yeah, you know, it, it is, it was sort of a nuisance after a while. Uh, but, it, you know, like most things, you, you uh, I never thought, oh, why, why do I have that on my forehead? Because I thought it helped the character. Same with clothes. I don't mind being uncomfortable if it's useful to the character. If it creates a, pro, uh, a silhouette, then I'm, you know, actors, by and large, are willing to go through outrageous discomfort. But there's a funny Jan New uh, Newman story that I, I like. Is When I first, my wife and I went through Vancouver in 83, and we fell in love with it. But, uh, and there was a lot of production up there, but I never worked there. And come, I finished The Mask of Zorro, and I'd just gotten back to L.A. And my agent said, there's this audition. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to work right now. He said, just take a look at it. He's 132, <laughs> warrior in the, you know, the spinoff of, the, of this uh, movie, which I enjoyed. And it shoots in Vancouver. And I thought, Vancouver? So, you know, I prepared well for the audition, and I was cast. And now I'm, I'm in Vancouver with my wife, and then I remember... He's 133 years old. 
So that means getting up at four o'clock in the morning, sitting in a chair, doing all this makeup, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, it's going to be awful. So I go and do my wardrobe, and I sneak out, and I'm just getting in the vehicle, and they say, uh, Jan Newman, the, ward uh, the uh, makeup key wants to see you. I'm thinking, oh, God. So I go in, I'm thinking, okay, she's going to say, you know, do you have any allergies? It's going to be hours. And she looks at me, and I say, hi, I'm Tony. I'm going to be playing Braytac. And she looks very carefully, and she goes, oh, you're fine. <laughs> so I'm thinking, no, I'm, no, I'm insulted, you know. <laughs> 133, but, uh, yeah, like you know, I because I didn't, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know the, the uh, show, but, uh, but she's a good egg, as they say. Yeah, she's nice to interview. Lovely, to right. To. And she's a, uh, uh, a fellow uh, Australian, right? I don't know that. I believe okay. she is from Australia, or she yeah, certainly well, she lived here. I didn't ask her that question. I'm pretty certain she is from Australia. She said she worked with, uh, on MacGyver once. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but MacGyver was in Vancouver. But I, I thought she was from here, no? She could very well be. Yeah. You guys need to well, we keep aware of your... <laughs> or it, yeah, it might have been obvious. Right? Yeah. Well, she doesn't have a Canadian accent. I mean, she doesn't have a North American accent, did you think? No. I don't think so. It can be probably because she didn't have an accent and didn't notice. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> she, she was normal. Yeah, she was normal, yeah. All right, well, let's move on to continue. Oh. Um, having, we've only seen, well you've seen the second season haven't you, but I've only seen the first and it's explosive end in your case. Uh, do you see yourself coming back in a time travel series? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, answer, the short answer to your question is yes, I do see myself coming back. Uh, you know, uh, continuing with, that's the great thing about sci-fi is everybody gets to die at least once. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but Continuum was great. You know, Continuum was great. There's a direct relationship I have to share with you between Continuum and uh, Stargate, which is uh, the fellow who created Braytac along with Brad Wright and Jonathan Glasner was a guy named Jeff King, who was one of the executive producers on Continuum. He wrote my episode uh, when, Star when uh, Braytac was introduced. So there's, uh, and so consequently, I... I believe he convinced Simon Berry and Pat Williams to take a chance on this crazy American. Uh, yeah, it was delicious. You know, it was uh, at the same time as filming Continuum, and I was up there for the first season for the entire shoot, you know, for four months, uh, was I was doing Once Upon a Time. So you had this, you know, world criminal, this political, you know, Rasputin or this, you know, strange sort of guy and simultaneously I'm playing Geppetto. So, you know, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was wonderful. I was, uh, you know, quite busy, quite exhausted, but it was great. It's yeah. an interesting role. Yeah, it is an interesting role. But, and it also, you know, there's so many Roger Cross and, and of course, Lexa. Lexa Doig, you know, is, uh, I have sort of a father-daughter relationship with her. She's really the closest one that I, you know, on that show. Uh, and now she's evolved into one of the leaders, you know, which is really sort of wonderful, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the second season, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to... I do pop up. I do pop up, as it were. Though has seen the second season. Okay. Yeah. Uh, continuum seems to be one of the uh, more better written time travel, past, present um, shows or movies, any, anything in that matter. Um, how do you find, um, is there any confusion that happens with certain events? Is that actually... Um, you mean between realistic events? I mean contemporary events? Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously it's based on a kind of contemporary anxiety, social anxiety about um, income inequality and all of those things that are quite, quite real. But the show, like most drama, is... is is based on that anxiety, but it's taken to an extreme because uh, you know the, I'm the head of continue of uh, uh, liberate, which is you know this social movement gone to the worst extreme that we can imagine, which is outrageously violent. I mean, 9/11 violent, you know, and that's not something that uh, any of us would uh, you know want to see. But uh, you know, it's sort of wonderful about these shows because they express that anxiety, they express that. Um, Sci-fi is never really about the future, is it? You know, it's about, it's contemporary, it's about our worries about the future, it's about our anxiety, it's about our hope. It's not really about 
uh, um, this make-believe land, you know. So, and that's why, you know, it's so... Um, yeah, yeah, and that's why it's so potent, I think, for, uh, for people. It gets, you know, a little bit deeper and stuff. And that's why I think, you know, fans are so um, really, really connected to it, you know. So it's being received well. Yeah, they're getting picked up it's for a third. Be a third oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it's been released. Uh, the first uh, season was released on uh, DVD. The second is going to be, uh, and it'll start filming again. I, they generally start in January, uh, uh, and they shoot in Vancouver for Vancouver. It's not any other city, and that's wonderful, you know. Um, so, and because there's so much that has been shot up there, you know, uh, X Files and all of the Stargates. Uh, you know that uh, it's really great. It's a beautiful city. You know, it's booming in the film industry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It really, really is. Well, you know, uh, they have. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it because it's cheaper? Or you know, it is. It is cheaper. It's not a cheap place. It's not like going off to a third world country. It, it, it's for. It's completely first world. Uh, but it's cheaper because they have. The government has uh, uh, taxation rebates. Uh, and uh, going back to, um, I don't know if you know who Stephen Cannell was, you know, he wrote, uh, he did Hunter and, and so many of uh, uh, early uh, episodics, Wise Guy, uh, uh, 21 Jump Street, they were all shot in Vancouver and Stephen Cannell helped develop uh, a lot of this, the uh, sound stages that were there. And so the infrastructure, this is in the early 80s, was there and now huge, huge films and also, you know, there are labor agreements and uh, most importantly, uh, an another thing that makes it, it's in the same time zone as Los Angeles, and it's two and a half hours by plane. So, in other words, you could shoot in the States, in New York, and be in the same country and take you six hours, or you can fly. So, when an executive, they have to shoot out of the city, and they have a child, and they want to get home and see her kids, you know, she, she's a producer, writer, uh, director, whatever. Uh, they're going to shoot in Vancouver. And, uh, you know, and also the thing I always say, like I uh, uh, shot in, in New Orleans. And, I, and it was, something was supposed to take place in New Jersey. <laughs> so we're shooting in New Orleans. And I'm thinking, why are we shooting in New Orleans? And then I, you know, I realized, well, they can make it look like suburban New Jersey, you know, with greens, with different plants. And, and producers want to get a good deal and then they want to say when I'm done with work where do I want to be do I want to be in Oklahoma or do I want to be in Louisiana so they choose that and uh, you know because the food and the, and the same thing is true of Vancouver you know marvelous restaurants marvelous physical uh, beauty very, it, sort of like Melbourne San Francisco Vancouver you know um, you know the ocean is right there there's so much and you know a mile in two miles in you can get to high up sort of a mock-up of high desert, someplace that's much drier. You get the snow. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, place. Uh, well, we'll go to a standard one. So what role would you like to play that you've never had the opportunity? You know, I'd, I, I'd love to be, you know, surprised something and more importantly, something that would surprise you. So I'm going to turn the question back on you. What, so that I, I know what I want to look for. What would you like to see me play? Ah, now you know how hard it is for me. What was your favorite role? Ah, you see, you weaseled up. Uh, you know, I... I I like to just simply play, you know, variety. Uh, getting back to your question, again, going back to playing Kagami, but also playing Geppetto. It, it takes me back to rep theater, you know, where you can be doing Don Armato, you know, sort of a silly, overdone sort of character in Love's Labor's Lost, you know, like a Don Quixote sort of thing. And at the same time, you're playing Iago the next night. You know, I, I like that. It, it's stimulating to me. Uh, but my favorite one, as I said earlier, is probably uh, uh, Bray Tack. I love Blow. Uh, I love playing, you know, uh, there's a movie with Johnny Depp that was about uh, drugs and stuff. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, so. so where to from here? Where are you? Uh, go back, look for a job, you know. No jobs, 
launch beyond the horizon. Yeah, there's a couple of possibilities, but you know those possibilities evaporate like that. Yeah. You know, so it's very tough. Um, uh, but uh, they say uh, an old saying that the, they pay actors for looking for work, waiting for work, and worrying about work. But the acting is free. <laughs> yeah. So there's some truth in that.